Hey guys, I'm Chris Barris. Uh, I'm the front man of my own band, Chris Barris Band, and I also play with a uh, LA based band, Supersonic Blues Machine, which is kind of a collective of different musicians from all over the world that play together. So I first started using Kemper around 2018, um, and a friend of mine who went to a corn studio, he'd had a few Kempers in and um, was blown away by it, and kept going, oh, you've got to try it, you've got to try it. And um, it kind of, it came out, uh, it was kind of a bit of a problem solver for me. So I moved on to um, in-ear monitors, mainly for my voice. My touring schedule was so hectic. And um, obviously with in-ear monitors, you've got you know, more control. Um, and it's easier to save your voice. I was kept blowing my voice out. But what I didn't like was the guitar sound. Um, you know, just having like a... You know, an SM57 pointed at a speaker cone coming straight to your ears. You know, it's not really anything you've, you've heard like that before. And it, it was really affecting my playing, uh, particularly on my solos. Everything was just a bit harsh, and I tried to EQ it to make it sound better in my ears, but then it would sound crap out front, and I just really struggled. And, yeah, a couple of guys I knew uh, were using Kempers and stuff, and I was like, oh, no, I'm not trying that. It's, you know, digital rubbish. I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, I use Class A valve amps. That's all I use. Um, <laughs> and then one day I was in the studio and I kind of got sideswiped a little bit. I was just down there, we were just chilling, it was a bit of a, like a low key thing, we're having some beers and things. And uh, my friend Josiah in the studio got his mate to turn up with the Kemper um, and they kind of forced me to try it. And I was kind of like a petulant like toddler, like, you know, stomping through, I don't want to try it, it's going to be rubbish. Um, anyway, so I just kind of sat there and just let them just set it up and, and they played a couple of uh, calls through it and they just put it through one of my 4x12 cabs. I had like a Marshall 4x12 there and uh, vintage 30s in it. And um, I was just having my beer and I was kind of like just humouring them. I wasn't really paying attention. And they started playing some things and I was like, that sounds really good, that's weird. And it kind of pricked me up a little bit and I thought, okay, I need to try this. I was like, there's no way that can feel like a real amp. And then so I took the guitar and I was like, and I was just thought, maybe I've had too much to drink. I was like, this is like really, really good. Uh, and I was going through some of the different sounds. I was like, this is incredible. Um, and then he actually let me borrow it for a couple of weeks and I took it home. I was just blown away. I was, I was absolutely blown away. And it solved another problem for me because I had my first tour coming up with Supersonic Blues Machine. And we were in like literally a different country every day across Europe. Um, most of it, we were flying um, and uh, it kind of solved an issue for me. Uh, I was using Laney amps at the time, and I loved it. I had a Laney line art amp, um, big pedal board. Um, but it was just like the logistics of trying to get that stuff around and to try and get it in different countries. And uh, I fell in love with the camp, and I was like, this solves all the problems. You know, I can just put it in a bag, I can jump on a plane. Um, and that's what I did. <laughs> And I used it for that tour, and um, at that time, actually, I, on the tour, I, I, I was using IEMs, but we didn't have our own monitor engineer, and it was kind of going wrong, so I ended up um, actually just doing it on normal monitors again for that tour. And I had my Kemper, um, it was the powered one, powered like the toaster one, as they call it, um, just going through a Marshall cab. So I had it operating just like a normal, normal amp head. Um, and it was phenomenal. It just sounded absolutely amazing. You know, I'm on stage with Billy Gibbons and you know lots of great players like Bernie Marston, and uh, you know it, it, it sounded amazing. Even like when I first uh, sound checked together, because there's three guitarists. We've got a rhythm guitarist Serge Simic um, from Serbia. He uses uh, DV Mark amps. Um, Billy uses Marshall JCM 800, um, and. I was using the Kemper, and so we wanted to get all our tones like matched up. And Billy was like, "Right, we're all going to play together. We're going to get our tones like dialed in." And he tweaked the load on the DV Mark. Obviously, Billy's got his sound. Like he sounds how he sounds. You know, he can, he plugs in no matter where we are, what country. He plugs his SG into this Marshall, and it just sounds like sharp dressed man straight away. And uh, he came to the Kemper, and I thought, "Oh, he's going to absolutely hate this." You know, this is Billy Gibbons. He's like collector of rare amps, rare guitar. And I thought he's going to. Like, rinse me here. And I was like, have you seen one of these before? He's like, yeah, I've played for him before in the studio. I was like, all right, okay. And I was like, well, what do you think? He's like, um, 
you know, he's like, oh, maybe, maybe it's a bit more top end. So I was like, yeah, yeah cool. He's like, perfect. And that was it. Like, done. You know, and, I, and that was, I was a little bit nervous, you know, it was my first time playing with Billy. Um, also, I've toured with him a few times now, so I know him well, but at that, that first like meeting, you know, it's Billy Gibbons, a rock legend, you know. He used to play his songs in pub cover bands, you know what I mean? Um, and he approved of it. For me, just having that consistency every night, um, you know, being able to just turn up and just know we've got the same thing. You know, I, I spec ahead that I need a Marshall 4 by 12 and yeah, it sounds the same. But occasionally you might need to tweak the output EQ slightly. Um, I think a couple of the shows ended up with like a vintage cab Marshall and that changed the sound a bit. Um, but it's so easy you can change the output EQ uh, without changing all the individual like sound EQs. You just do it on the like what they call the monitor output which goes to the cab. Um, tweak that and so the cab sound on stage sounds great but then out of the back is always exactly the same which goes to the PA so the PA sound, you know we're playing big you know 15,000 kind of capacity like things 20,000 um, you know big places so most of the sound for the crowd is obviously from the PA and that um, is always the same X2 XLRs out stereo but, so, but you can EQ the monitor out differently which is really really handy if you're playing through cabs um, because, yeah, cabs do vary and the sound did vary. And once I got into the, the vintage cab, I can't remember the difference it made. I think it, it made it a bit brighter maybe and had to tame it a bit compared to like the normal like 1960 cabs. I think that was the way around it was. Um, but, you know, it was a two second job and then it just sounded like fantastic. And, you know, after that tour, I was just sold and I've, I've never looked, looked back since. <laughs> So when I started off using the Kemper, I was using um, a lot of the Michael Britt profiles. Um, I was turned on to him by a friend, um, I, on the one that I borrowed and, and used, and, and they sounded really good. And I ended up buying a few different ones. I bought like a Dumble pack. Um, I bought like the 69 Marshall packs, some, some Fender stuff. Um, I, I ended up buying most of his collection, really. They're so reasonable to purchase and so easy to load on and just sound great. And Michael Britt's, uh, Britt's phenomenal uh, session player out in Nashville, and he's just got like, the best amps. They profile it in a top class studio, you know, perfect circumstances, great mics, um, and they just sound fantastic. And that's what I used for a good number of years. Um, and then last year, when I recorded uh, my new album, we took the Kemper to the studio and we used it for a few things, but we had so many amp options and so many pedal options in the studio, you know, that. But we probably used, you know, like six different amps, something that you'll just never be able to take out on the road, you know. Well, I didn't even own the amps, they were all borrowed in all the studios. Um, but we, we got a really, uh, we got a couple of really great sounds that we were happy with in the studio. And uh, one of the engineers there, George Perks, um, he, he's really up on, on profiling campers. So uh, we decided to profile it, you know, and they got a big hundred grand desk and, and all this stuff. And so he did the, the profile in and the first profile came through and, you know, it sounded okay. It wasn't quite right, but then used the um, refi like the refine function. Um, and it probably took about three goes of using the refine. And then I was like, it just sounds the same. I just, I could not tell. So then we did a blind test. We did it uh, with me and the producer, Dan Wello, the guitar player on sixth. And, you know, top class producer, worked with Enter Shikari, Monster Truck, it's his own band, Berry Tomorrow as well, Wicked Metal Band. Um, and we, we did a blind test and we both got it wrong. We both chose the one that we thought sounded the warmest. We were like, ah, like the valves, that's the warmest. And we both got it wrong. <laughs> You know, live, I only probably use, you know, 5%, 10% of the Kemper's capabilities, but just because as a front man, a singer, and, 
you know, performing, I'm talking in between songs and stuff like that, and, you know, I just kind of want to make my life as easy as possible, so I can just enjoy playing and concentrate on that, and I just want it easy. So I just, I almost just treat the Kemper live, almost just like an amp head, really. So I've got the five patches that are, um, I'll have the, the Cornford on clean, crunchy, I've got one with the fuzz pedal added, which is using some of the new Kemper fuzzes, which are awesome. Um, and then I have like a heavier rhythm, and then I have a solo channel. And then on each of those, I have different things that I can add, because you can assign the stomps that I have. Some will add in a compressor to add a bit more gain, or I'll overdrive it a bit more, or um, you know, add in delays, reverbs. And um, I actually use quite a lot of that for inspiration for my, my latest album. Um, with some of the more like ambient parts that kind of like sit underneath it, kind of like bring the track to life. I kind of fell in love with the uh, ionosphere reverb, a big, um, you know, it was like almost like a, a choir like type sound underneath, and um, I fell in love with that kind of sound, that big ambient, ambient like reverb. I just think just don't come at it with any like preconceived notions like I did originally. You know, I can talk from experience. I was like, oh, I don't want to spend any time with that. I want an amp that's got eight knobs on the front and I know exactly what they'll do. Well, actually, like, the Kemper's the same. It's got all that stuff there. You can just go really, really in depth if you want to. Um, I think, you know, a lot, a lot of people, or at least some people I've spoken to, kind of a bit like, scared of oh god there's so many things but you know in reality you only need to spend a couple of hours with it to understand how the menus work and how everything it works i mean the new with the profile of stage there's a new app now where it's all visually there in front of you and it, it's so easy to use the possibilities with it with it are endless and i think if you if you try to judge it too quickly then maybe um you know you'll come to the wrong conclusion Morphine thing for me is perfect. So, f just as an example, on um, on my f main fuzz sound that I use uh, for some riffs, I've got like an octave kind of sound, fuzzy riff, and then for the solo, all I kind of want is that, just but louder, just so it cuts through more. I just hit the morph, and then everything just goes up. You know, it just changes. So all, all the gain level will just go up. So rather than having a separate patch, it's all on the same. Um, the same rig on the same number. So I hit the pedal once and I get more delay, more reverb, more volume, bam. And that's the solo channel. I've kind of gone through every everything, every way of doing it. You know, I I went for a whole stage where um, with other bands, where I just plug Fender Strat straight into an amp, direct, no pedals, no effects, and I do everything on the volume knob. I don't, you know did that for a few years, and then um, you know I would look at finding like an amp that's got a couple of different channels and maybe with like a boost on each channel so that I've got that variation there then I'd look at building like a, a small pedal board then I went to a huge pedal board I've kind of done all these kind of things um, all the kind of different ways of doing it and for me you know I have a hard enough time trying to remember what I'm playing and <laughs> what, what, what lyrics I'm singing don't want to have to worry about anything else on the floor and, and for me like Kemper just solved everything <laughs> 